So I am fretting this neck today. This is um, a gorgeous piece of Indian ebony which I've trimmed the excess off before I stuck it on and then I could use the uh, excess strips for binding and then to make the kind of pinstripe effect I've just put some maple veneer uh, while in between the two while I was gluing on the binding um, and then that runs around as a mitre around the bottom there and then this is a laminated abalone which I've um, I've cut out. I really like this stuff actually because um, you can get it in much much bigger pieces than you can get abalone it's a fraction of the price um, it's quite easy to cut out um, and yeah inlaid fine and it's nice and shiny not like um, sort of the uh, abalone effect celluloid stuff so I put that in there and I've got abalone dots and then a abalone laminated abalone headstock logo too uh, so this is a bound fretboard and that makes fretting it a bit more awkward than a regular fretboard um, and then to add to the equation this is a compound radius so 12 and a half inch 9 and a half inch and then obviously gradually getting tighter as it goes down so pressing the frets in would be a pain because I'd have to change the call every few frets um, and also you don't have the exact shape call that you need for every fret so I've got some, this is Jeskar wire, it's uh, not quite jumbo, sort of, I guess a halfway house between your classic sort of fret wire and jumbo fret wire. Um, and this came radiused to 10 inches, um, and all these strips here. So what I can do, because I want to start with a slightly smaller radius on the fret wire and then it flattens out as it goes into the fret so the first few frets I'll be able to do just with this as it comes and then as I get further down I'll then have to start bending the wire which is not ideal really getting it in strips like this because when you bend the wire you uh, you sort of lose about half an inch of wire on the end a coil would be more ideal so I've cleaned out all my fret slots using a little um, fret slot cleaning saw, something like that, from Hosco, they're pretty good. And now I need to just file off the, uh, the sharp edges on the fret slots, that way the frets go in a bit more easily. I'm just using a little... Uh, little file to do that one and the reason I had to use the uh, the reason I had to use the um, <laughs> the reason I had to use the fret slot cleaning saw is because when you stick your binding on it's inevitable that a bit of glue is going to then sleep it seep into the slots there so I, uh, I minimise that as much as I can by just applying the glue very carefully and sparingly with a paintbrush <laughs> and that means there's next to no squeeze out um, and also it's a lot easier to tape the binding down because <laughs> you haven't got to worry about squeezing the glue out and applying lots of binding uh, lots of clamping pressure to the to the binding so paintbrush works quite well so I didn't have too much to clean out of the fret slots. And I'm really just knocking off that little sharp edge and just helps the fret go in a bit more easily. And I need to be especially careful around the inlay because I don't want to trash it when I um, hammer the frets in. That's never happened to me before when I've inlaid pearl or abalone. But then this is abalone laminate, which is well it's not a it's not a solid material, it's lots of tiny pieces of abalone in layers glued together to make one big piece. 
so I need to be careful. Marvellous. Uh, right, so I need to clean my fret wire first in case there's any oil residue or anything like that left on it. I don't know how many of these pieces I'm actually going to need, so I'll just do them all. There you go, you can see how much gunk came off the fret wire. So it's worth giving it a clean. So, let's have a think. I need to cut the tangs off of these frets, so what I'll do is I'll cut them to length first, as close as I can. Now, cutting the fret tangs off is incredibly tedious. So, rather than going through and cutting the tang off for every single fret, I uh, prefer to do it one at a time. I need to take a little bit more for that. I'm just using my end cutters. They um, seem to do a perfectly good job. Well, now that I've said that, I've hashed this one up a bit. It's better to take as much as you can in one go, really. Let's have a look. Yeah. So now that I've cut the tang off, what I do after that is I just get a little, oh, where is it? There it is. Fret end file. And this works really well because it's got one perfectly flat face at the bottom, which is uh, perpendicular to the actual file side. Let's move this out of the way. And then I'll just tidy up the underside of the tang that I've cut off. Even if you've got a uh, proper set of um, fret tang nippers, they still don't make this perfect. So, I don't really see the value of them. Not at the price, anyway. There's one. And the, uh, the fret end file does a really good job of tidying them up. So, just make sure this guy fits. And he does beautifully. Now, I'm going to use a drop of super glue just because it makes life a little bit easier. Gluing them in. Just a tiny bit. And he's ready to go in. Hammer. And I'm just going to tap the ends in first. Now I've just had a little tiny spooge of super glue there, so once it's in, I'll give it a quick wipe with some acetone. sanding the uh, fretboard back after the frets are in. It's not a huge amount of fun. It's much easier to scrape it with a razor blade 
but even so, I'd rather uh, do as little of that as possible. There we go. One down. 23 to go. But before I do move on, because I've oops, super glued them in, you need to work fairly quickly. So I'm just going to uh, check with a feeler gauge. Make sure the frets are in properly. Yeah, see that little feeler gauge is just just getting under there. Right, one down, many to go. Now one of the beauties of doing it this way, starting at the top here, I've just cut this fret possibly too short, we'll see. Which means, no, I think we'll be okay. If it was too short, I could use it for the next fret or the one after that, depending on how too far short it was. And I use barely any fret wire at all that way. Well, I save a lot of fret wire that way. Now then, when I'm cutting the tangs off, I'm cutting the tangs so that there really is barely any gap between the insides of the binding. Because when the fret flattens out, it changes the length of the fret by such a minute fraction of a, of a millimetre that um, you haven't got to worry about it pushing the binding out or anything like that. And what I want is for as much of the fret as possible to have tang to hold it in, especially at these ends here, because otherwise you find that the very end of the fret lifts at the end. And... Um, that creates more levelling and also you get a gap here and you always end up with a sharp edge which is not good for comfort. Okay. Right. Number two. Here we go, that's better. Right, that's the scary part done. There we go. So, those are all my frets in. Now, a couple of issues. There's a fret just here where essentially what happens is the um, you've got tang, gap, tang, gap, tang and if you get unlucky and you cut your fret the, you cut the tang and basically the last bit of fret that should be grabbing just before the binding there's no tang there so you've actually got sort of almost 
I don't know, five, six mil of fret where there's no tang. Um, and sometimes that can be difficult to get that to stay down. So I shall remedy that by just putting in a drop of super glue and then uh, clamping it for a minute and that will keep it down. But I can even press it down with my fingers. Now this means I'll get glue on the on the fretboard, which is not ideal. Now I'm just going to press and hold it for a minute. Now this would be a good time to have some accelerator, but I haven't got any. So I'm just going to sit here for a minute. Other issues? There are the odd area where a bit of super glue splurged out from underneath the fret slots, from underneath the frets when I hammered them in. Basically that just means I used too much super glue. There's um, not a huge amount of space between the uh, bottom of the fret slots and the bottom of the fret tang, so the glue has just splurged out. But that's quite an easy one to fix, which is something I'll do later when I go to, you know, tidy everything up. Um, one more significant issue. In a couple of places, I managed to dink it with the hammer. There you go. One there. One right next to the inlay, which is not ideal. So, I think I shall be getting the soldering iron out and seeing if I can uh, get them out. Now the question is, where's the soldering iron? Not here. Well, the soldering iron's warming up. I think I'll get these uh, frets filed flush. And let's move that so I don't set myself on fire. So I'm just using the uh, fretboard file and I'm going to make sure these are all flush first. I'm just going to keep going with this until I just want to see the end of each fret just disappear into the binding. That way the uh, I've got a nice rolled over fretboard. If they're nice and rolled over at the edges and they'll be uh, they'll be comfortable. sharp edges on there. What I might do leveling beam with 80 grit is probably yeah that's better. something about this dent. It's probably the worst one. That seems to be loads better actually. So 
So I'm literally just using a bit of kitchen towel, soldering iron, heat. And that's just helping the, uh, the fibres that have been compressed with my ham-fistedness to expand again. And as soon as the paper turns brown like that, that's when it's time to uh, stick a bit more water in it. So I don't set my nice guitar neck on fire. <coughs> Maybe I'll name this video How Not to Fret a Fretboard. Dodged a bullet. So, next I shall. So, now what I'll do next on this one? Carve the neck, probably. Got the back of the headstock shaped down to thickness rather. There's a volute in there, uh, big old volute, but that's what David wants, so that's what he's getting. Um, just need to carve the shape of the neck really. And then it's ready to be attached to a body.